Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Four months ago, I reviewed the Pergear Laser Storm L5, which is just a basic desktop engraver. After that, Pergear released the S10 series, which comes with a touchscreen with the offline control feature, and it also comes with a more powerful 10 watt laser module. Today, I will test out this engraver and tell you what I think is good about it and what can be improved on this engraver. I would like to thank Pergear for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the gantry, four aluminum extrusions to form the base, the motherboard enclosure, a touchscreen, a 10 watt laser module, three legs, a steel plate to put under the machine, the power supply, and some tools. First, grab the step one screw bag and use these four extrusions to form the base. The one with the Pergear logo at the back, the one with the yellow sticker at the front, and the one with the ruler on the left with the number side facing inward. For the one on the right, just make sure the larger screw holes are facing outward. Use two long M5 by 25 screws at each corner to secure them. Then grab the step two screw bag, the gantry, three legs, and the electronic enclosure. Slide in the gantry from the back of the frame. We are going to install three legs at these three corners and install the enclosure to work as another leg. There are seven long screws and one short screw. Use two long screws at each corner with a leg and use one long and one short screw for the enclosure. Next, grab the Step 3 bag. There are two belts, four T-nuts, and three end caps for the 20x20 20 20 extrusions. We will install the belt on the left side first. Let the belt go over the top of the wheel with teeth and go under the rubber wheel to reach the front of the frame. The other side goes under the back wheel to reach the back of the frame. Use a T-nut to secure the belt at the front and for the back, pull the belt to increase the tension while using the T-nut to secure it. Do the same to the right side. I will just put one of the three end caps at the front right. For the ones at the back, the manual suggests that you cut the belts and put them on, but I will just leave the belt as I may want to readjust the tension in the future. Then, mount the laser module on the X carriage plate and secure it with a thumb screw. Let's connect the cables, starting with the Y limit switch then the Y-stepper motor, the X-limit switch, the X-stepper motor, and the laser module. The touchscreen uses an HDMI cable to connect to the enclosure. Finally, do the power supply. We can now turn on the machine. Okay, I will use my own honeycomb bed to protect the table. If you don't have one, you can use the steel plate that came with the machine, Let's start with the sample 2mm plywood. Put the included black acrylic plate between the laser module and the plywood to set the focus. Okay, let's put on my laser tent. And connect the fan duct so the smoke can be exhausted outside. I will open the cover and use the touch screen to engrave one of the sample files on the SD card. Then home the machine. I can use the arrow buttons on the screen to jog the laser module to the starting position. Okay, press the position to save this as the origin of the job. Press the frame button to do a preview to make sure the material can fit this job. Let's close the cover and start the job. It asks me how many passes I want to run and I will just start it with the default one pass. It cuts a dog into the sample two millimeter plywood. The front side is clean, and with the honeycomb bed, the back is also quite clean. 
Since there are only two sample files on the SD card, I will also run the other one and see what it is. It's a butterfly that is scanned line by line, just like how we engrave photos, but I do think it's a little bit too dark. I will go to my computer and use Lightburn to create more G-code files and copy them to the SD card for more tests. I will start with a simple engraving test with 5,000 millimeters per minute and use different powers on the sample plywood. Let's save the file on the SD card and it will show up on the touch screen. Since I've already moved the position to the starting point, I will just press the position to save the origin. Draw a frame and then start the job. I normally use this file with the feed rate at 5000 mm per minute for a 5 watt laser, so it seems we need to run it with a faster speed to get a better result. I will change it to 8000 mm per minute and start the job again. Okay, I think it looks better, so using around 7,000 to 8,000 millimeters per minute to engrave on plywood should be fine. Next, I will engrave this Manhattan City photo. I would rather make it a little lighter than too dark, as these areas may be hard to see if the picture is too dark. So, I will use 8,000 millimeters per minute and dither mode. The result is very nice. It shows all the small details of the photo, and I am quite happy with this result. Before I do more cutting on this 3mm plywood, I will run a cutting test and see what the optimal speed to cut this material is. I will use 100% power, starting from 500mm per minute and moving down to 100mm per minute. All of the little squares can be cut out, but the one at 500 is not that clean, as there are some leftovers on the edge. So, I think anything between 300 to 400 should be fine. Next, I'm going to cut this map. As you can see, these small areas are quite challenging to cut, so I will try 350 millimeters per minute and see how it looks. For the compass, I will just engrave at 6,000 millimeters per minute. I forgot to do the compass engraving first, but this will only cut out the small details on the map. The board itself won't move at all when sitting on this honeycomb bed, so I think it should be fine. Okay, the result is not too bad. The islands north of Canada were burnt a little bit too dark, so I think I should run multiple passes at a slower speed or lower power for this kind of cutting. Next, I will try to cut some thicker wood as this 10 watt laser is supposed to be good at cutting. I will start with this quarter inch poplar solid wood, which is about 6.35 millimeters thick. Normally, a 5 watt laser needs to do multiple passes to cut this board, but let's see if this 10 watt can cut it in a single pass. Okay, it can cut through this 6.35 millimeter wood completely with a single pass at 75 and 100 millimeters per minute. The 151 almost cut through, but not anything faster than 150. Next, I will try half inch thick wood, which is about 12.7 millimeters. In fact, I did not expect it to be able to cut through in a single pass at any speed, so I tried from one pass to four passes and compared the result. With a single pass, it can go deep down to seven to eight millimeters. Two passes can go a little bit deeper, but the difference between three passes and four passes is not that obvious. So, I will move the laser module as close as possible to the wood without scratching it and try 5 passes. As you can see, if the laser is moving too close, it burns too dark, but it can cut through this half inch wood completely with 5 passes. My last cutting test will be on acrylic. Since the sample acrylic that came with this machine is around 2-3mm, to three millimeters, I stack two of them on top of each other and tape them together to make it 5.4mm. I will try to cut out some letters. The 5.4mm acrylic board can be cut through completely at 150mm per minute at 100% power. Finally, I will test out the roller. There are four legs to raise the machine, the roller, and two cables. If you use this roller with a per gear machine, you should use the one with white connectors. 
Just disconnect the Y-axis stepper motor and let this ruler work as the Y-axis. Connect the Y stepper motor to the extension cable and the other end goes to the bottom of the roller. Then, use these four legs to raise the height of the machine. I will use the roller to engrave on this bottle and set the focus using the same black acrylic plate, just like how we set the focus on the plywood. Okay, we are now ready to go. Let's go to the computer. I will resize this logo to 80 by 80 millimeters, and the direction also needs to be flipped negative 90 degrees like this to fit the bottle. When I do a preview frame, you can see the roller just works as the y-axis and it draws the frame on the bottle. It looks fine and I can start the job. The logo looks really nice, even on this old bottle. Okay, let's talk about what I think about this machine, starting with the pros. The 10 watt laser module works pretty well, and I am happy with both the engraving and cutting results. It can actually cut through half inch solid wood completely. The offline controller and the touchscreen are easy to use. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, but the menu is super simple. All you need to do is select the job file, and jogging the machine to the starting position with the controller is much easier than connecting the machine to the computer a few feet away and having to use light burn and laser gerbil to jog it, as it's not that easy to see the exact position unless you use a laptop and put it right next to the machine. The HDMI cable allows me to use the touchscreen outside my laser tent, and when you are not using it, it has a magnet at the back and you can just snap it on the enclosure. The quality of the roller is also really good, and it can work with a round object around 200 to 250 millimeters. The thumb screw on the laser module is easy to adjust, and it's better than the basic Pergear L5, which uses a hex wrench to adjust the height, and other machines that use one thumb screw on the side. It has an emergency button, a reset button, and a power button on the enclosure, so if anything's wrong, you can use any of these buttons to stop the machine. As for the cons, the machine itself is well designed. However, when working with the legs of the roller, Three of the legs are raised perfectly, but the side with the enclosure can only sit on the edge of the extension leg, which is not secure. So, I 3D printed another leg and used some T-nuts to rearrange the enclosure to make it work better. Since this roller is a per-gear roller, when working with the per-gear machine, it should fit perfectly. However, it didn't. Besides that, I think this machine is a solid build with a powerful laser module. If you are interested in this machine, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.